the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, January 16th, 2022, Season 4, Episode 7, Lots of Dead People. So I had an interesting conversation some time ago with my friend from SpaceX, uh, whether he ever thought that uh, the whole Mars project and some of the other um, things like the tunneling project, uh, Boring Company, if those things were just make work. And he said, sure, I've thought about it, but what's what's the other option? You know, there were uh, ideas back in the, after the Depression era of just, uh, I mean, it wasn't serious, but it was to make a point, you know, is it better to have people go out and dig holes and fill the holes back up or sit at home and do nothing? You know, make work, basically. So my point here is that... Um, in the case of the new sports economy, which again will be triggered by a single publicized uh, fundraise of a league that fits the criteria, league or esports league, that the, the surrounding ecosystem that will grow up around this will um, create lots of jobs, you know, directly and indirectly. More, more jobs indirectly by, than directly, actually. So, uh, I'm just going to put this straight out. God hates gambling. Okay? God hates gambling. And uh, this is my life's work to change the direction, to especially in the sports side of it. And why? Well, because it's a gateway drug. Gambling tends to bring along with it other things. Drugs, prostitution, uh, sl- the slacking of morality, uh, affects the way you look at the world, the way you do business. Uh, it's not it's not confined just to itself. And the reason for that is it's money worship. It's money worship. That's all. There's nothing else happening. And you can't serve two masters. So if you serve money, then you've made your choice. You can only serve God or serve money. You don't get both. And gambling has no purpose uh, other than just money worship. And it's just, it's it's bad. It's bad all the way around. Uh, you know, you can try to make excuses for it, but the statistics clearly show how bad it truly is uh, for, for the individual and for society um, as a whole. So as mentioned in the other uh, podcast, I have taken a vow of poverty that's perpetual. That means from here on out. I've explained it a bit more uh, in the other series. What it basically means is that uh, I'll be happy with food, shelter, and clothing. I'm not out to try to get rich. Frankly, I haven't been for a very long time. Uh, ASM has been a mission to uh, create something new, regardless of what impact it had on me personally. Um, My life has not been some kind of party. Uh, through all of this. It's uh, paid my way just through a middle-class life uh, to get it to this point. My kids are grown. Um, I don't have anybody to take care of but myself, and that's by choice. Frankly, I don't want to take care of anybody else anymore. I'm tired of it. Um, So, yeah, I just want to see the mission through, and I'll be developing other things, but that's not for discussion on this podcast. The fragility of a sale. So one of the things I learned from Gary Halbert was just how fragile a sale is, meaning that, uh, you know, at it, it, it any point along the process when somebody's deciding whether they're going to buy something, if you lose them, uh, the sale collapses. Uh, NFTs, the current way that it works, and I'm, I'm continuing to do more research on this, and just the complexity for the customer is completely out of bounds. Um which tells me that the vast majority of of the interest that's being displayed, if that's not, I mean, frankly, I think it's being hyped up and made, I think the numbers are being made up just like Bitcoin prices in the hands of a few wallets. I just don't see how the general public could be this deeply involved. I don't know of anybody who's in, you know, has a portfolio of NFTs. And frankly, I don't even know anybody who has a portfolio of cryptos. Uh, this seems to be the realm of, of nerds and uh, gamer types in their 20s and maybe 30s 
but the masses, um, I don't see it. And again, the, the fragility of it, just if you do anything wrong in the sequence of events to purchase an NFT, your money is gone. Okay, so I want to talk about the value of a customer list. So we, we acquire um, between five, it seems to be up a little bit now, between five and ten new accounts per day just as a mo function of momentum and things that are already out there. Uh, that's the current growth rate. And we gained about 150 new accounts in, in the week that roughly surrounded Christmas as a result of Zach's, um, you know, this gut farkas season. Remember that the gambling guys are paying hundreds of dollars. I, I think the number now is over $200, but just use $200 as a round number. Uh, so that's a customer acquisition. We're acquiring them naturally you know, call it the low number, five per day, right, which is actually low. So that's a thousand dollars a day in customer acquisition value just from doing absolutely nothing. Thirty thousand dollars a month. It's it's probably more than actually I know it's more than that in terms of the raw numbers per month and the cost per acquisition that the gambling guys are paying, but just to be conservative, let's call it thirty thousand dollars a month. That's the rate at which we're gaining customers without spending any money to acquire those customers. So once again, uh, I have seen uh, some activity in the courts that is uh, breaking the rules. It's just incredible to me the amount of dishonesty that goes on in this realm. Uh, it, you know, None of the cases that we've ever been involved in have been decided on the merits. They've all been technicalities. I'll get into that at the end of this um, podcast. But my my respect is positively gone from, I mean, I have none. It's it's completely gone. Uh, you know, there's no honor at all in this. It's just power and the ability to do things and chasing incentives and, you know, gold coins. That's all it is. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't see a future here. Uh, frankly, History is littered with uh, stories of what happens when you lose the honor uh, and the and the rule of law and truth in the courts. Your your society collapses, and that's a track we're on. Uh, unless something changes drastically, it's uh, this republic is finished. Mark my words, it's finished. It's not going to continue to exist in this form. Uh, DraftKings stock has been cut by more than half, closer to three times. Uh, since the summertime, it just continues to fall like a stone. I think that's fantastic. Keep it up, boys. You're doing a fine job. Uh, frankly, the price should be zero because you're an illegal scam and you have been from the beginning. Um, the Wire Act is only the beginning of that. That's really all that should matter. Um, you know, full stop, game over. But um, there's more to it than just the Wire Act. So, Last year's charity benefit to World Vision, which was school supplies for the U.S., I went back and looked at the actual direct numbers. It did all go for that uh, particular program, school supplies. Direct con cash contributions, 4947 multiplied 14 times through their m matching programs that they have, which gives a total impact last year, uh, calendar year 2021, is $69,258. So, um, like I said, we've never stopped doing that since the day, first day. Okay, so what happens when you expand gambling? The best place to look for that example is Africa. Africa has rampant sports gambling. I've watched a lot of documentaries and looked at a lot of information on this, and it's, uh, it's bad. It's bad, bad, bad what happens. Um, just, it's, it, you know, in the same way that the mining companies and so forth extract resources from the ground. The gambling companies extract resources and just and just basically destroy the environment. The gambling destroys the people. The Holmes verdict uh, looks like about a 50-50, but at least they didn't, um, they didn't let her go. Uh, I don't think too much is going to happen to her. She'll get uh, a little bit of time in a, you know, minimum security prison. But it probably will dampen a little bit of the um, puffery and the kind of things that go on in Silicon Valley. 
this one was a particular heinous case because it involved health matters, uh, you know, giving people <laughs> a wrong results on their health test. You know, it's funny, that's uh, kind of happening right now, isn't it? I mean, some of these uh, virus tests have less than a 50% accuracy rate. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, it's not like that stuff has stopped, but maybe this will slow it down a little bit. Um January 6th. So if you think that that was a tour group that went through the uh <laughs> went through the White House, I mean not the White House, but um you know, broke in to ca- into the Capitol building, uh God help you because y- you're lost, lost, lost. And uh when you pass from this life, it's not going to be pretty. If you think that was a tour group, I mean people lost their lives in that um and it's not some media narrative there's plenty of independent raw footage from people's cell phone cameras as to what happened there in spite of all the revisionism that continues to go on um yeah that wasn't (laughs) that was not a, a tour group come on so the great resignation this is an interesting thing that's going on in the last couple years um i think most people have it to some degree have reassessed their lives in terms of what's important um whether they needed to have two incomes in the family, whether they needed to live in the city, all that. I think all of that has come under inspection from what's going on here in the last couple of years from the virus. And that's why you're not seeing people rushing back to the employment uh, that they were. Because, look, if you don't have to pay for a particular thing, then you don't have to go earn it, right? You know, a penny saved is a penny earned, well, in the same way, a penny saved is also a penny that you don't have to go earn. So, you know, if you figured out how to work your life out without certain expenses, then that money doesn't have to be earned, right? And I think a large number, I mean, in the millions, people have figured this out. And they discovered that the things that they were paying for, uh, lots of major things, really were not contributing anything to their life but stress and overhead. And that's why they're not returning, because they don't need to. Now, what is the impact of that? Well, it's going to slow economic growth. And frankly, I don't think that the um, the numbers are being accurately reported. In fact, I know they're not. I mean, they've been fudging the unemployment numbers since day one. I mean, after the um, LIBOR scandal a few years ago, if they'll fudge that, they'll fudge anything. So I don't think the numbers are right. I don't think the economic numbers are right. I think the only real growth we have is inflation. And the reason we have that is because there is nothing else. They know that if they don't continue to print money and continue to provide liquidity into the system, you know, allowing people to do whatever they need to do or whatever they think they need to do, then the system's going to collapse. And all of the central bankers in the world are pretty much on the same page. It's like a circular firing squad at this point. Um, Either we keep it up or the game's over. Now, there are some camps, and I'm not sure on this, you know, call them conspiracy theories or whatever, but there's some camps that say the whole thing is being designed to fail and they're going to pull the plug. I'm not so sure about that because... It will turn, you know, it's one of those storm the castle situations. Um, it's not, they're not going to be able to hide somewhere that, that the, the angry hordes aren't going to find them. And I don't think that the Mad Max future that would result in is, is the future that they want to see, living in some bunker somewhere while above the ground people are looking for them with, uh, you know, tanks they've stolen out of military installation. I mean, that kind of thing. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, if if, you, if the whole world pulls a plug on this, basically, how was that? How would that happen? It would happen from allowing the U.S. dollar to basically fail, just completely fail, because it's the world's reserve currency. The result of that would be a worldwide depression, and and like the likes of which we've never seen before. So I don't think that's going to happen. So. Back to the original point, the great resignation. Yeah, I think people are figuring out how to make do with less and that the other, a lot of things that in their lives that they were being uh, convinced they had to pay for really, really were not necessary. And so economic growth is going to be hard to find. So if you don't have real production going up and driving the numbers up, then you really just – all you have left is inflation, which is exactly what's happening. 
Um, all right, so the 1961 Wire Act, okay, the, the big, for me, I've lost all hope in the legal system. Um, you know, I've been a Boy Scout, so to speak, uh, you know, in, in the face of <laughs> lots of opposition, especially going back to Costa Rica when uh, there was a, about half the insiders wanted us to just drive the thing forward full speed, forget about legal certainty and all that. And I really put my foot down and said, no, I'm, we're not going to do it that way. And if we're, uh, if we're going to just be, be a, a rogue operation, then I'm out of here. Now, nobody wanted that. You know, they were all fine with me being out front, taking all the fire. But when I said I'm not going to be part of it, if we don't search out legal uh, certainty, then, I'm, you know, somebody else is going to have to step into my role. Uh, yeah, that that nobody volunteered for that. So, uh, however, that being said, about 17 years later and many millions spent, um, I don't I don't believe it anymore. Uh, you know, to advance uh, sports gambling in the face of the Wire Act, um, which is is uh, 1961. Just to give you an example, if you say that that doesn't matter, well, the Securities and Exchange Acts of of uh, the 1930s, well, that seems to be okay. You know, that's an old set of laws, and yet that's the laws that run the agency. So you're going to tell me that. You you revoke a 1992 law, which is 30 years old, and you don't enforce a 60-year-old law, which is, uh, you know, even more settled than the 30 years, but you do enforce the 1930s laws for the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah, okay. Bottom line, it's all a scam and a fraud. It's full of scoundrels, liars, and thieves. I had... I don't believe it anymore. Um, they've lost me. I I will never trust them again. Um, Alper's not on that page. He says he may get on that page someday, but you know he's going to continue to chase it down the the uh, the the track the, the you know the legal track, uh, cooperating and all that. Um, you know, and hopefully it works out. I, on the other hand, I'm washing my hands of it. It's. Uh, it's it's a bribery machine. It's obvious that if you um, hire big enough le- law firm legal, you know, have the right letter heads, things happen. And um, even though we did that, we we hired the, the the top of the crop, and it still didn't work out. I guess we didn't pay enough of them, or didn't pay them for long enough, or something. But it's just ridiculous. I it's just garbage. Um, lawyers all should be at the bottom of the sea what a bunch of despicable rats um the, you know and then look at the look at the patent situation we have a patent in communist china people love to throw that in there how is it that you no know, how is it that we have a patent in china okay which was near the bottom in terms of the cost to prosecute and the timeline and yet none of the western nations us included have issued us any patents we're still going round and round and round and round and round. I mean, come on. I mean, it, there's a message there for anybody who wants to see it, who's interested in the truth. What does the Bible say about gambling? Look it up for yourself. Cannot serve God and mammon. And since I'm the person at the helm, uh, I don't serve mammon. So uh, it's gambling and mammon go together. So you, 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 you're not going to get my support. Period. So that direction will never, ever change as long as I'm in this role. And again, Alper's even more anti-gambling than I am, uh, and, and he's much deeper into it than I am. But that's up to him to decide. If in the future his team decides, I don't know, you want to turn it into a uh, fancy sports book, then that's that's on on that group and team. I won't have anything to do with it. All right. So we have uh, not been uh, allowing account funding or payments for literally years, years at this point, uh, yet the market continues to trade thousands of contracts per day every day. Um, in fact, I've never seen a day go by with less than a 1,000 contracts in a day. There's something called the mass formation psychosis. I have the link in the outline. It's very interesting. Um, I think that's what we're seeing. 
California, Florida, Wire Act, legal cannabis, and lying about budget impacts and real costs. Okay, so I've gone through this before, so I'm not going to go through it again. But the vice peddlers, which is what they are, you know, drugs and alcohol and gambling and everything, you know, prostitution will be up next. Watch. They always talk about the positive budget impacts, um, which they never make their numbers. They never, ever make their numbers. And they never, ever put the costs in there. They, they only show the positive side of the equation and not the, the negative side of the equation. That's completely dishonest. If you're going to do a budget impact, you have to do the positives and you have to do the negatives. So evil will continue to be evil. And this is a hard one for me to understand, but I, I have to accept that it's true. Evil will continue to be evil and the wheat and the tares will grow together. That's just the way it is. Uh, that's in the Bible, and it's going to happen like that. Um, you know, a snake is going to be a snake. It's going to be a snake, and there's no changing that. Gambling is a predatory, non-productive use of capital that creates addiction and many other harms. It's a gateway drug to other activities that are equal or worse in damage to humanity. It's also a moral issue for me because it's money worship. Like I said, I cannot abide that. It's called a vice and a sin for a reason. Vegas openly embraces these labels. There are only two camps, folks. There's the light, investing, and the darkness, gambling. There's no gray area. You can't serve both. Back to Jeff Hazlett's pick a side, which, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. You know, he his thing, uh, he would say it at every get-together, pick a side, pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. At the time, I didn't really fully understand why such a big point was being made of this, but I, I, I definitely get it now. It's becoming more clear every day what this means. <laughs> it's too much to discuss in this podcast. If you want to hear more about that, then please see the other series that began in the 70s. So I wonder why so many non-U.S. people spend their time worrying about gambling legalization here. Why, why, you don't live here. Why does it matter to you? I guess trolls will be trolls. Uh, Gavin Newsom's plans with the $31 billion record budget surplus in California. So to all of you who continue to hate, Calif hate on California, I guess that's just the price of being number one. $31 billion budget surplus is pretty phenomenal. Okay, so the only, uh, and I can't emphasize this enough, um, the only way to change direction away from gambling is to make our option the most powerful, greedy, and sexy option around. That's it. Everything else is not going to work. The amazing thing is that those things are true. I mean, that's what we have here. And it will be evidenced by momentum and gravity once a single fundraise is publicized. You know why the SEC and a handful of bad actors firebombed us again, inches from victory? Because evil knows once we get this out, there'll be no stopping it. Just like I said, uh, we will steal bit by bit by bit by bit all of the gambling customers without even running any ads. There'll be no way to stop it. It will just, like a big vacuum, it will, it will start and it will never stop. So, my pillow head, uh, Mr. Lindell, is a nut job now claiming that 300 million people would be going to jail for life if his things were put before the court. You know, there's not 300 million voters, nut job. I mean, <laughs> who listens to these people? I don't, I don't, I can't understand it. Um, you'll be seeing bankruptcy soon, bud. You're, uh, your lies have, have dug you a very deep hole to fall in, just like they always do for anybody on this earth, no matter what you might think. Uh, DraftKings falling like a stone, already said that. George Soros is right about markets not being efficient. They're not efficient, absolutely not. They operate by mis At this point in time, they operate by misinformation-driven hype, which causes short-term greed and fear with the occasional rational moment. This was the reason why uh, Gary Halbert's stock system was so effective. Uh, he said nothing whatever mattered except for the short-term trading impact of news events and what the public thought they meant. He said the only sane thing you could measure, and this was a result of his lifetime study of sales psychology, was how the public would react short-term to news events. And it was a very successful system. People 
people ran, you know, raved about it. I mean, it was really, really good, a good piece of knowledge building material that would t- teach you how to look at a given news story and determine whether or not the public would think that that was positive or negative for a given stock over a short-term trading range, you know, like a couple of days or even sometimes just a day. He said everything else was hocus-pocus and no better than flipping a coin, meaning that, you know, chart reading, fundamentals, all that stuff. He was dead right and far more than I understood at the time when I was working with him about 20 years ago. So, again, uh, thanks to everyone who supports, uh, you know, our efforts here. Um, The links to resources are in the show notes, as always, along with ways you can contribute if you want to. Um, All all, uh, contributions... Um, go back out at at 140% of what comes in because I take 10% and then I contribute it to World Vision, which multiplies it 14 times. So you actually put more out into school supplies in the U.S. than you put in if you contribute. And also I will uh, give you some special bonuses if you forward your receipt to help at allsportsmarket.com. So again, we traded uh, almost 100,000 contracts yesterday. So that, that, you know, no funds in or out for years, and yet here we are. Um, and that includes the bonus, uh, mar- you know, the bonus margin driven pilot market and the uh, learning market together. That's still very, very good. Um, and then finally, a word of warning. And uh, I'm very confident, you know, just from watching how this works over many years, that. When I say something on these podcasts or I put something in the public domain, it it finds its way back to where it needs to, and I don't have to forward it to them. I don't have to. I just need to put it out there. So um, there are two matters, okay? There are two matters, and I think they're actually connected, um, even going all the way back to uh, 2009, I think it was. Um, I think that uh, Leon sprung that SEC inquiry, which went nowhere, uh, this is so. This is not the first time. Just so you know, that the SECs come around. Um, I believe these things are all tied together. So, you know, there are two points to make here. Number one, in the case of the civil claim, there's never been a trial. Okay, there's never been a trial, and I've never even even been allowed to answer the complaint or to speak. And there's just no way around that. You cannot come up with a different story because it just isn't true. There is a clear court record from the court itself showing that I was shut down from not only answering the amended complaint, which was mailed off while I was moving between Costa Rica and Texas to put ASM on shore, um, you know, and was actually that answer. Uh, the de- default relief was granted, and then a bunch of uh, courtroom um, character assassination took place, and then it was the judge was changed his mind supposedly on the fly, and then wouldn't even allow me to speak, not even speak. <laughs> what country do we live in again? Okay, there's no way around that, and in the co- in the case, so that's that's the that's the problem here with this whole. Um, matter, no matter how many hundreds or thousands of pages of garbage you want to put into the courts, at the core, that's what happened. And so there was no trial. In terms of the SEC, the no action request was filed the the day that the pilot market started up, and it's not been acted upon since. And they're not going to get out of that, okay? They're not going to be able to explain that away, because even to this date, there's not been any action on it. So to you know, to try to paint us as some sort of um, bad actors or, or criminal type behavior where we knew better and we were just doing it anyway. It's just nonsense. Not only did we do that, but we've um, commented on cases and tried to help develop the law and all the rest of that. They're not going to get away with this. Um, and I, you know, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why they want to put the thing away without a lot of fuss, which is what we're working on. Um, you're not going to get away from that. You just, you know, we petitioned them for, you know, told them what we were doing. And uh, rather than acting upon that in an official capacity, they surreptitiously asked me to take mention of it down from the website and then then went rooting through our forums, I guess, or something, and found out that one of the um, 
funding programs which contained a basket of goods had common stock in it and said, aha, and then, you know, attacked on that. Yeah, you better believe that's going to be put in front of a jury and and they're not going <laughs> to if that should if they're stupid enough to do that. And it's just not going to fly. It makes no sense. It, it, it doesn't pass the sniff test. So with Leon, no trial. OK, there's only two words to know for, you know, no, only two words. There's no trial. This was a no trial, no trial of the facts. Shut up. Tape my mouth shut. You're not allowed to answer. And in the SEC, there's the no action. Okay? Never acted upon, still to this day not acted upon, lied about, and then you turn around and file a bogus lawsuit with a bunch of lies in it. Okay? Now look, here's my point. There is a day of reckoning. Okay? Every person who was involved in these things, who had a position of power to make a decision... Okay, or to advance the lie, whether it's a judge, a lawyer. I won't, I won't fault clerks and paralegals and those people because they're just doing what other people told them. But the people who decide and the people who move the ball, you will pay a heavy price for this kind of behavior. Now, I'm going to say right up front, this is not about me. I believe this stuff happens all the time. I don't think that I'm being picked on. I don't think that it's anything unique. I think this is how a lot of innocent people end up in jail because they can't hire expensive lawyers. I think this is the reason a lot of injustice takes place in the legal system. And I just needed to experience it firsthand on a couple levels so that I could tell the story. But listen up, you knuckleheads who think you're, you're some kind of God. You will face the real God someday for this and every action you've ever done like it, which has injured somebody. So laugh, mock, scoff. I'm warning you right now. You better knock it off. You better fix the things that you've damaged and the people you've damaged. And you better get right with God because time is running out, folks. It ain't long now. And laugh and giggle and... and Look around you. How, how does the world, what direction are we going right now? I mean, be serious with yourself for a minute. Everything's going okay? Really? You're making a very big, very, very, taking a very big risk with your life, your eternal life, okay? Look at Bob Saget. He thought he had another in number of years to tell dirty jokes. By the way, not dirty jokes, rotten, filthy, awful jokes, Tucks himself into bed. It's dead that night. Okay? So, whatever lucre, gold coins, favor trades, whatever you've done in this court system to do what you damn well know is wrong. Okay? Everybody, whether they believe in God or not, has it in them. You know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. You do it because you're paid to do it. You do it because you're trading favors with somebody. And let me tell you something. The lake of fire, it's a real thing. That's where you're going to go. That's, that's your eternal future. For what? A BMW? <laughs> really? You're going to trade? You're going to go around damaging people's lives so what? You can live in a beach house for a few years before you turn into a crusty old fart and die? Yeah, it's not worth it, man. You better go back and clean up the damage you've done or you're going to pay an eternal price for it. And I mean it. Okay? I absolutely, I am sure of it. Okay? You will pay eternally. So, if you're in that game, if you're a judge or a lawyer or anybody that's connected to these things, you better fix your mistakes before your last heartbeat. Or you're going to be facing a future that you can't even imagine how horrible it is. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks again for listening, and I'll speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.